Welcome to our implementation weekend. And this is the final of It's All About You and All About Love. There's a wonderful quote that I love that says, just because you tell me that I love me doesn't mean to say that I am loved, that I can feel it. You have to put the work in. If it's a relationship, you must put the work in. You both must put the work in to feel that love. You can say it, you can write it, but you have to feel it. It's the same for you. And the most important person that we must love is, is us. We have to love, we have to love here. And that's what this is all about. Loving you and nourishing you and making food that's simple and easy and quick to prepare. So you've got food that you can put together as a very fast meal, whether you're dining by yourself or whether you're inviting someone to join you or a group. So let's get on the, on the track and see what all this love food is all about. So first of all, we started with beverages. I love to give a choice. I even make the, the good bacteria inert by adding one with alcohol because you have to, you have to have something there that suits everybody and you will know your guests or yourself. So you've got all these recipes in your little download which will be coming to you tomorrow. Because we had this love beach theme, I used that blue spirulina, which is beautiful put into your kombuchas and your water caveats or water kefir. This one was coconut water caveats, it's beautiful, with just a little bit of, of blue spirulina and a little bit of ginger, because the ginger gives it fizz. It gives it the bubbles that we all love. We're going to be doing beverages next month in our March implementation. We'll be making a bun together beforehand so that we've got them so you can make lots of beautiful beverages. I won't pick the big one up, but that's just an infusion, which is not actually a fermentation, but it's all my citrus from my garden and it's just infused in a beautiful clean water. And it's a lovely little, you can use it as a mixer or you can just have it by yourself. I love to always do an infusion when I'm, when I'm having a meal. It's just a lovely, lovely little side beverage that you can have. So then we went to antipasto. Now antipasto, when you've got your fermented goodness, you can always put together a meal on the fly. You can do it as a main meal or you can just do it as a starter. In this case, we just did it as a starter. So of course we've got the olives and the bread and the, the coconut cheese. Look at this beautiful onion. Isn't he gorgeous? That's a golden shallot. I grow them and I ferment them and they keep for years, absolute years. And the flavor just keeps evolving and it keeps nice and firm. Best pickled onion you could ever get. And the pickling of course comes from the lacto fermentation. So that was our early pasto. Now, sometimes you'd like to add a little bit of heat because those are all cold. So one of the, my favorite little heat is the cauliflower kimchi koftas. So here they are all, all made. They're very easy to make. It's just two, you see my little baby cauliflower yesterday. So it's just two, two, about two cups of shredded cauliflower. So you just grate your cauliflower. That little cauliflower weighed about two cups. And then to that you add two cups of kimchi. So it's two and two and about one and a half of a flour. I used my green banana flour because that just binds it together. Traditionally, koftas are made with chickpea flour. You could get your own chickpeas and just ferment them in a bit of salted brine, salted water, and then just strain them off and give them a good rinse and blitz them yourself. You can sprout them. And then, and then blitz them and make them into a flour. Or another really good flour to make is buckwheat because that's nice and gentle on the tummy. It's an alkaline grain. It's not an acidic forming grain. That's what we need internally is lots of alkaline foods. So yeah, your buckwheat, that's a good one. I like to soak that one overnight in milk kefir or kefir, however you want to pronounce it. And we'll be going into these too. Very shortly, we'll be doing lots of cheeses and butters and showing you how to make those from those milk heavy little grains or little cultures. And then you just soak those, then give them a rinse and 
you don't really, you don't need to cook them at all. They'll soften nice with about 12 to 24 hours soak and then you just blitz them and you can use that as a flour in, in your little coffees, which is really good. So but with your kimchi, the two cups of kimchi, you can use just the brine. What I do is I use all my little leftover bits that are in the bottom of my jars. I just put it all together and that's what I make my cauliflower koftas with. So I'll have a little bit of, little bit of uh, thickness in there, like some shallots and things like that that are left in there. But the brine is just really tasty. You can add some ground cumin or something like that if you wish. If you want to put a little bit of spice, but I find that the kimchi gives it enough. So that's it raw. So that's it just rolled up so it's so it's so easy to make and there you go that's it cooked now tomato salsa is one of those quick and easy ferments ferments in two to three days and it only takes less than five minutes five minutes to, to prepare it together and you've got a lovely tomato salsa which is lovely on your antipastos beautiful just put on top of your bread and we spoke about that in our dinner but it, it combines nice with that but if you want a heat if you want a bit, bit of heat like a tomato Tomato, bake your tomatoes, it's so easy, just put bake your tomatoes in skin and all, just get a fork, which I've done here, and just mashed it up, and then it's come off the heat, it's cooled, but it's still warm, and then I've added my smashed fermented garlic, I just get my garlic and I just smash it, because when your garlic's fermented, it's quite soft, it's no longer really hard, so it'll, it'll go to a paste really fast, some fermented ginger, the ginger's done in the lime brine and the turmeric and I do those together in the lime brine and that lime gives it a nice little flavour in there as well. You could add some dried basil would be really nice if you, if you have some salted herbs which is another ferment where we just get some way of preserving your herb garden when you've had all your herbs you just get them together and, and put it into a salted brine it's almost a paste and it ferments and keeps again for years and years beautiful to add to tomato dishes like that so that's warm warm with those fellas so the, when one of my friends a beautiful friend she sent me a message and said Lenny you're putting egg into your beetroot soup which is the next one that we would be serving I like to serve that separate to your antipasto because it is like a little soup so you could serve that and like we said you can add like the potato with the dill and the garlic that's with it, which is lovely by the side. Yeah, but she explained to me, Lenny, I don't eat eggs. And of course, you did say uh, we could substitute the prawns in the main meal with tempeh or tofu, but marinate it first in the calcium and mineral rich vinegar. And of course, the calcium comes from eggshell. So you've got eggshell in there, you've got boiled eggs in there. But uh, give your, your wings creativity. That's what these foods are all about. They're guidelines. I'll give you the recipes, but they're just guidelines. And you can substitute what you need. So if you wanted to, to marinate your tofu or your tempo, tempeh overnight, and you, you did not the calcium mineral rich one, you could use the fire cider. Fire cider is made exactly the same way. It's an infusion in apple cider vinegar. So instead of putting your mineral rich greens and your, your calcium from your, your clean eggshell, by the way, that it just dissolves that eggshell very fast. You won't see the eggshell. It just whoosh, goes like magic. So with your, with your, with your fire cider, that's warming ingredients. This one's actually one made from a matcha tea. It's a wild green matcha tea, chili, horseradish, lemon from my, my tree and the vinegar, the, the vinegar, the apple cider vinegar is put into there. But normally, I, my recipe that I supply to you, it's got all the warm ingredients, your horseradishes, your onions, your garlic, your ginger, and your turmeric, and you immerse that, and then strain it off, and you keep that part to strain off, because you can use that in all your cooking, all your food preparation, and then it's the liquid. This is real immune boosting, your fire cider. That's the one that you can take when you wake up in the morning. I know I said about your, your medicine in a jar is really good to take in the morning, but you can alternate them. You can have your medicine in a jar one morning and you can have your fire cider another morning. With your fire cider, you take it different to you take your medicine in a jar. With your fire cider, you put, hold it under your tongue as for as long as you can and then you gargle. So you're going to help that vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is that nerve that runs all the way from brain all the way down and 
you need to be you need to be exercising it so gargling singing and humming all gives it great exercise so you can say fireside is so easy to make and you can use it as a, and if you use it to marinate your, your tofu in to use for our main meal which we're coming up to and it's, you can use it for there as well you'll find that you don't need to add the kimchi brine because it's got enough kick in it so that's that's another look so it's just a matter of playing around with them and seeing what your taste buds like and giving yourself variety variety is the spice of life so then we went on to our main meal our main was the pasta this one is the the pasta that the rustic pasta as i call it that you can ferment your own pasta or you can just go and buy a pasta if you if you wish and then we had it with the i did keep calling this kale salad did you pick that up in the dinner i kept saying kale and kale on the mind brain for some reason but it's wild rocket and if you can't get wild rocket you can just get normal rocket so that was for the side and you can use like fermented pumpkin or you can use just a nice little roast pumpkin and put some cheese some olives and some sun-dried tomatoes or something like that is a lovely and that makes it a, a lovely main for you and easy to prepare and you'll have it all partly prepared and things like this you can prepare that days ahead if you go in down to the bottom of our gut club there's a skinny gut there and it's not just for people wanting to reduce in size there's actually a planning day there and we all need to because we're looking after you we need, planning day is something so important so that you've always got food to eat good food and if you've got good food you'll eat good food and you'll just find that you're so more relaxed and your week just goes so smooth that's what this uh, february one is all about giving you back your time giving you back your time so that you can do things for yourself and love yourself and loving yourself part of it is eating good food so it, things like uh, i didn't tell you about my with the with the anti pasta was the we talked about the other night about making a, a a dip you'd always have a dip with it and that one was the avocado with the sauerkraut combined and that's just so tasty and it doesn't go the color doesn't discolor you don't need to put lemon juice in it because the sauerkraut or the brine you can just add the brine your medicine in a jar you can just add that to avocado and that's a nice dip but I love it with the sauerkraut that one's got a turmeric one of my favourites is turmeric and fennel. And we made that. We made that last in our January gut club. So there it is. It's all ready now. And it's ready to start mixing in. So that's a really good mixing. Avocado is a beautiful mixing with fermented foods. One of the really quick, quick foods that you can make for like a, a lunchtime meal is that if you're in your, on your planning day, if you shred, if you like, I like to spiralize them. You can get some fancy spiralizers, but mine's just one of those little hand ones. And I, I like to do those all in advance, so I have them in little containers in the fridge, so they're ready to put together. With that, you can just add your tomato salsa, just your tomato salsa, and a little bit of oil gives you a nice balanced meal. Um, a bit of I like to have some good quality oils. That one's a truffle. It's a, a lovely aged olive oil that's got truffle and it's even got 23 carat gold leaf in it look at that isn't that superb just gives it that little bit of wow so you mix that through and squash an avocado through it makes it really nice and creamy but any of your when you're serving like a salad or something can you put sauerkraut through it and you think oh the people are going to think that's a bit sour just get an half an avocado and just squash it through and it'll certainly counteract any sourness and it makes it nice and creamy uh, one, it, it, those salads will then only keep for a week to two weeks at the most in the fridge because you've mixed in all, all um, fresh goodies. So that's, that's a really good little dish that you, can, that you can have and you can serve to yourself or serve, serve to your people. So I think we've, we've done our drinks, we've done our first meal, we've done our soup, we've done our coffers, which you could do those as a separate entree if you wanted to just serve them like on a little plate with, and always have your little little dishes of, of pickles. So you have a little selection. You have a little selection that you can eat all the way through if you're doing these in, in many courses. So you can add those like with your little kofta. In there I've added like a little fermented daikon, which is the same as the pink falafel pickle in the 10 for 10. 
here. Now, the two foods that we most people lack in their diet is the medicinal foods, because all foods come within families. And the two families that we really need to add in just small little amounts is the bitter and the sour. These are all the sour. And the bitter foods are things like bitter melon. And here we have bitter melon fermented in a, in a kimchi paste. So the paste that you make to put into your kimchi, you can just ferment that. And that's, that's lovely. It takes away actually the bitterness. It, it just evolves into a beautiful flavour. So you can use that as a topping on any of your foods. So that, that's a really good way of getting your fermented food in. And you can leave that on your table as you go through each course so that you can take little bits and just add it with your fresh foods. Even like, your, like I'm here, you can use those as your toppings. So that's how it works. Now we've eaten a bit, so our tongues are getting a bit, and our tummies are getting a bit. Oh, we've had quite a bit. So now it's time to put in a, a palate cleanser. So I've given you a beautiful recipe. This one is a granita, and it's so easy to make. I've used orange juice and just some coconut, it's the same coconut water kefir that I made into this one without the blue spirulina added. I just added that in. Of course, we're going to freeze it, and when you freeze it, a lot of the good bacteria will, will diminish but they all have their place and you're getting plenty of it, so it's not a problem. And a granita is, granita is something that you can make well in advance and always have in your freezer, like here's the little tray, excuse me, here's the little tray here, and I'll just put the lid down so that I can show it to you. So there's your granita and it's starting to thaw, but it's so easy to make. It's just a matter of squeezing some oranges and adding your coconut water kefir or a flavoured like a ginger turmeric or something like that, or either a kombucha or a water kefir or even one of the drinking vinegars you could put in there. And I like to put rosemary or lavender's really lovely in there. Just freeze it and then you just get a spoon and that's your little palate cleanser in between all these courses that we're having. It also makes a nice little dessert. So now it's time to add sweetness. Let's add some sour to the sweetness. So what I love to finish with is much like how we start, a little platter. You can do this on a flat plate or you can tear it down. The main ingredient on here is a coconut yogurt. In here I've, this is one that you use those little kefir grains, you just use your coconut cream and that, that you just pop in there. I've put a little bit of bush flavour in there. I've put some Davidson plum my wonderful Davidson plum that's dried there, and some lily pilly, and some rose water because we're talking of the, the, the month of love, so roses sort of all go together. Lots of fruit and some little sauerkraut balls. Now these, once again, you can make these ahead of time. Always have them in your freezer, unless you've got a big family and they eat them straight away. There's only myself and my son, so we don't eat them that quick. And again, freezing them will diminish a lot of the good bacteria but they're there and they're easy to digest and they're little foods that you've got when you need a snack. So let's make them because they're, they're something that's so good and you'll have that sauerkraut there and you'll want, you'll want to make them. So when, when we make we use dried fruit, dried fruit is extremely concentrated so it's a really high form of sugar for your body. So always soak them, soak them at least overnight. These ones, if it's a all my leftovers and there's a few little nuts in there as well. I've got some walnuts in there. You don't need to add nuts if you want it to be nut free and you've got people coming that don't eat nuts. You can leave the nuts out. Uh, the buckwheat, the buckwheat done, but you can pop that buckwheat into your milk kefir, the same as we spoke about the flour, but leave it whole. They're always really nice to put into treats. In your recipes, I've given you a nut-free chocolate and I've given you these little balls, the little balls that we're, we're, that we're making, which are just always easy on you to have. And you can take those to work or you can have them for a snack. And they're very, they're very, they're very filling, very nourishing. So these would be soaked in, I love to use water kefir. It's just beautiful to soak it in overnight. They'll plump right back up and it reduces the sugar levels. You can rinse them and redo them, I don't. I just do with them the once I find that's fine. You'll find that it absorbs most of the liquid. 
You can actually add something like that green banana flour to that. Um, you can throw a couple of eggs in there if you want it, and you can bake it as a fruit cake. You can do them small or you can do them whole. It's very creative wings here. We don't need to measure. You just need to look at it and think, hmm, I'll make that like a cake batter. And you will know. So in here we go. I do have the measurements sort of for you in the, in the, the book so that you don't have to worry about about me a handful of this and a handful of that. So you put those in there. Then you would add something like a dash of coconut oil. So there's your coconut oil. Some of the green banana flour. That's a nice prebiotic. Some coconut. Some coconut's a good, good to add. Some fresh vegetables. So things like grated carrot and grated beetroot. Beetroot, because we're going to put some chocolate in there. So beetroot and chocolate go beautiful together. This is the gold beetroot, not the red one. So that one's gold. So they go in there. Some of your fermented, some of your fermented ginger and, and turmeric is always a wonderful addition in there. So, so your ginger. A little bit of the, a little bit of the brine. Oh, that smells beautiful, that lime brine. It's just lovely. That's about all that we need. Oh, some cacao, of course, cacao. If you wanted to put sweetness in there, that's a local honey. You could put it in there, I don't. You could put a little bit of, little bit of cinnamon. That's always nice, some ground cinnamon. Now, vanilla. Did you know that vanilla and chocolate are fermented foods? Without fermentation, you don't get the smell. Isn't that amazing? So that's my vanilla living in the tropics. We grow vanilla. It's a beautiful, but it doesn't have any pods on at the moment, but it grows so wild. It just goes all over the place. And you can actually grow it from little pieces. But the vanilla powder is much nicer than the vanilla liquid. It's just beautiful. It smells mm, so beautiful. So a little bit of vanilla powder. It's beautiful put into your smoothies and any desserts. It's even lovely put into your yogurts. So the idea of that yogurt, as I said, that's the, the main part of your meal and you just put your fruits and anything else that you wanted, want, want to have with the side of it. So that, that's really about it. So then we just bought, so we need some cacao, but oh, here it is, here it is, sorry. So this is cacao powder. It's a wonderful form of magnesium. And it's quite bitter because it doesn't have any, it's not like chocolate that's got all those additives added to it. So it's quite good for you in small quantities. We don't want to be eating mass of it, but like that. Then it's a matter of just blitzing that all together and, and you will end up a little ball like that. So that's what it will look like. Then you just roll them. Now, I like to use coconut with the beet kvass. You know, the liquid beet, beetroot that we fermented? It makes the most beautiful food colouring. So we're talking love, so pink sort of was the theme. I, white was my theme, but white because I think the colour white's all about, to me it's purity and oh, just love. So that's why I said the colour was white and I was going to bring in lots of pink roses and, and pink colouring and that's what I did. So there you've got him. And well, like I said, you can keep those in the fridge. It's nice to refrigerate them before you serve them. Or you can pop them into the freezer. So I think we've made our little meal. We've all come, it's all come together beautifully. So now it's time to eat. <laughs> so thank you for joining me. I hope that you've picked up something for you. I hope that you can work on you and give yourself all that love that you deserve. Big love and bacteria.